You say Vibram, I say Vibram. You say Hoka One One, I say Hoka One One. You say Skechers, I say Skechers. You say Merle, I say Merle. Trying out some new shoes by Merle called the All Outs. So we're gonna hit uh, just a little bit of dirt right about now. Here's the box, pretty catchy. Outperform, get it out, you know, like outside. See the map on there, the terrain map on there? Nifty. Merle and also North Face work with Vibram. I have very little wear and tear on these Merle barefoots with the Vibram soles. And so I went with the intention of trying to get a trail shoe with maybe larger lugs. And the reason why is I also want to use them on the golf course. Shopped at the North Face and they didn't have my size. They started at eight and I'm a seven and a half and I ended up getting an eight anyway. So I went over to the Merle's right next door. I checked these out. These actually do not have the Vibram bottoms. They have the, a Merle bottom and they are calling it the Select Grip and also the Skechers calls it M-Strike when you, when you aim for the middle there. Merle is calling it M-Connect. Anyway, these uh, it seems like shoe manufacturers these days are putting some other colors on the bottom of the shoe. I mean, like five years ago, they're just black. Now we have a tricolor. Sorry they're so dirty. They seem to put a lot of thought into the design. I think the most important design is whatever grips well. These lugs are supposed to be five millimeters and you can actually see it's like stacked coins the way they lay out these lugs. I don't know what the average height is for a lug on a golf shoe but I think these will these are gonna grip the uh, the grass really well. I don't do much trail running around here a lot of the trails are in the mountains I don't particularly like broken ankles and poisonous snakes I'll do it once in a while uh, but I'm a road runner giving my road legs a rest and run on some other terrain whether it be on a grassy field uh, maybe a even a golf course before it opens or after it closes and some light light trails that I have around here a six mil drop I'm looking in here because it actually says that right there cushion and drop so that's not too far off from my comfort zone which is a four millimeter drop I, I really I kind of bought into the minimal footwear movement and the zero zero drop which I still run in once a week with these which are also Merle's so six millimeters not bad and, and you know what you do feel it when I was in the store the salesperson handed me two sets I told her I, I like this style and she went back in the storeroom she brought out the seven and a half and eight and because she knew these things uh, sometimes run they're a little tight right here in the forefoot and she was right I ran around the store for a little bit which is interesting on the floor they actually have a little kind of a it's set up like a track and yeah they were a little tight and I said well I could just take out the inner sole and she said no it's just too uncomfortable if you take out the, the inner sole and some shoes you can do that like my Skechers if you take out the inner sole they're still padding underneath I don't usually wear shoes inside the house but I hadn't worn them outside yet so I was up in my weight room and they just felt really hot so today I went out for a five mile run. The first part of the run was fine. I went over some stones and I did feel some, some pain. So actually to run over stones, something like this might even be better. The Hoka Bondi 3s. But for, uh, for grass and uh, dirt and maybe even light snow, this would be fine. After five miles, I did start to feel a little bit of pain in my in this area but of my foot I'm gonna keep trying these out uh, maybe I'm just not used to them yet and also the bulk of my run was on a road I only hit you know 100 meters here and there of trail they say they're built for the road but 
the salesperson told me that you don't want to do ultra long runs in these things. So lots of padding, lots of cushioning around here and also in the tongue. A lot of this stuff is mentioned in other videos, uh, probably in Spanish, but <laughs> this is called the uh, burrito style for, uh, for the tongue. So it is connected to the upper here. And then on the side, there's a little, it's open here on this side, but there's a little strap, an elastic strap inside the shoe here that connects the, the tongue. It didn't cause any chafing, any rubbing yet. It, it works, I think. So this just adds to uh, the, the wrapping of your foot uh, support. And I also like the, the lacing set up here, metal, and then these kind of loops that the laces go in. Here on the side we have the overlay, which is called the hyper wrap. There, it's the sole. Unifly. It looks like I'll actually be able to go through some water on these. We've got some rubber up here pretty high on the shoe. This is a vegan shoe, by the way. No uh, animals harmed in the process. A little bit of rant on um, planned obsolescence. After I bought the shoe, I went online, of course, to check out other reviews. I didn't want to overlap too much what they were saying. And I stumbled upon a video from a guy who's who bought his like third or fourth pair of Merle's boots, a boot which really held together over the years. It was produced in Italy. And then subsequently he bought other pairs of Merle's boots over that went over the ankle and they were made in China and it made more recently and they were falling apart. And I've had the same experience with other shoes, not Merle particularly, but you know, big name brands. My wife had a pair of Nike, where the sole just came apart. I had a Adidas pair of golf shoes and the sole again just falls off. And often they say that this is eco-friendly, like the shoes are gonna disintegrate or something. So we're you know, not gonna have a planet with you know, plastics laying around for a thousand years. I think they'll still be there in a thousand years. It's just that the glue won't be there. It's gonna be toxic dust. Anyway, I've had a pair of the same Doc Martin boots for boy 15 years I'd say and those boots are awesome my wife bought a pair of Doc Martens with a different kind of a sole and that turned into like this gummy residue was being left on the on tile floors and impossible to scrub off and it was just disintegrating it was awful and we wrote the company and you know basically you just get a sorry out of that but you know, I hope these companies are gonna start to realize that people want shoes that don't fall apart I realize runners can only expect to get at most 500 miles out of uh, an average shoe but then after you run in them you hope you can get some more mileage out of them in with walking I become so irate at when the sole just comes right off and I think you agree with me these were made in Vietnam so I'm really going to see at the end of three years I'm gonna see if this is coming off I think people should just demand quality 